Well, for those of you that are fans of my friend John Terman and his beautiful blue and white Spanish bungalow right near the Capitol in Oklahoma City, then this is for you because you have so kindly invited us into your home to show us your holiday de decorations. I'm so glad you guys could come by today. Oh, it's just, it's it's so fun. And you and I were talking, I, I would say if there's, because I did a little preview first, if there's an overarching thematic to kind of your holiday decorations, to me it's wreaths. Yes. Lots of lovely things from your grandmother and vintage and mercury glass. Lots of shiny things. Lots of shiny sure. things. Right. So, and obviously if we're gonna start anywhere, we have to start out with of a course. tree. So sure. this is just this is just wonderful. Now, you are a, a proponent of, of artificial trees because you guys have allergy issues and as a designer, you know the value of something that is enduring. Yes, and, and it is one of those things you can start early with it and it can stay up till epiphany and you don't have to worry about the drying and the watering and all that stuff. And, yeah. And it's an investment, even a, a live tree is. So at least this carries from one year to the next. So. And live trees, for a lot of people, yeah. a lot of people commented that they're so expensive this they are. year. They and, really are. Yeah, and they're not enduring. Mm -hmm. And also, if you're going out of town, then that could be exactly. an issue also from a fire hazard so, perspective. Well, but, oh my gosh, John, so, this is just lovely. Well, that's 60 years of collecting, so. Um, before I could collect, people collected for me. We were given ornaments every year as kids, you know, to um, just one of those things that eventually when we were, became adults, we would have at least a start of a Christmas tree collection. And that's exactly what happened. So, um, and my grandmother bought some pretty cool things. Uh, I'm trying to see. Well, now when some... you say you refer to your grandmother, is this your maternal grandmother, your paternal, paternal grand... grandmother? So paternal her grandmother. Her name was Eunice okay. Terman. Look so she's a Terman. Um, and you know, there are things, I think she may have made the one you had your hand on. Um, there were some great, I grew up in Eastern Oklahoma and there were some great stores in Tulsa that had really beautiful decorations and she would often buy something there for us. Um, and then there are things like, like this little mouse over here. That's one of the first ones I remember ever having. So I am pretty yeah. sure it's close to 60 years old. Um, and of course he always gets pride of place. This ginger man's one of those. Um, and you don't see things made like, especially the ginger man anymore. Okay, now, uh, can we just focus And then those on are these? from Tulsa, from Miss Jackson's, you know. Oh, Miss cool yeah. Jackson's. Yeah. Hey, the, if, if in the comments, if you guys are from the Tulsa area or whatever, and you remember Miss Jackson's, by all means, let us know. Absolutely. These are really special, I think. And very, then, very special. And then, you know, in the, in the 90s, I started collecting some Radco things and some Old World Christmas and... Um, these, there's a collection of these animals that are from Virginia, from a craft fair that we collected over several years. Lots of, uh, you've got obviously lots of blue and shades of blue to complement your existing exactly. decorations. So. And it really, it fits in just seamlessly. Thank you. It really, so, and, really and I, does. I've never picked a theme for a tree because I like to be able to buy pretty mm -hmm. much anything I want and yeah. it'll work. And I don't feel like it, um, I mean, it's just a nice traditional tree. It's not something that goes out of style. Um, you know, some years it has more ornaments than others, but. Uh, now talk a little bit, if you would, because you talked about how you finally were able to find LED lights, yes. the twinkle lights and the C7s in warm tones. The, the, so finally, I'd been looking for a couple of years to buy a new tree, but I wanted a pre-lit with LED. And for so long, the LED was that bright blue, uh -huh. white color. It just doesn't look uh -huh. good in the house. It's not warm. So this year, I finally found one that I really liked um, and got this. And then it came with the white lights. And then I added the C7s, uh, or C9s, I think they are actually. Or C9s? These are smaller. These are okay. C9s, These yeah. are even small. These are or, the smaller. So C7s are a little bit bigger? They're the bigger okay. one. Anyway, but, um, and with the LED. So um, it's nice now. I don't have to worry about, I mean, I actually put it on a timer finally so it can come on and go off. And I used to kind of worry about all the heat uh -huh. from especially the C9 lights. They got hot. Um, so, so this is this is kind of a quirky question, but this, these are the C9s. Are the C7s the ones that what we think of as the traditional Christmas bulb of the 50s? Was I, that the I shape? Guess. It's just, well, yeah. no, it's still the shape. It's just bigger. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So. Well, it's just it is absolutely it's it's beautiful. And then I want to point out very gingerly, Stuart, if you can because it leads to my question of the day. Uh -huh. I'm gonna guess I know which camp you fall into, John, but here's my question of the day. When you decorate your home, do you remove what is there year round and then add your holiday uh, decorations in their place? Or do you embellish what's already there with Christmas baubles and Christmas decor? So what do you do? Well, I try to do the latter. I try to um, just embellish what I have. Um, in some cases, like where Stuart is right now, that um, it's a 
cheese dome, I guess. Anyway, normally it's filled with seashells. So I did take out the seashells and put it in the mercury glass. But I don't have a place to store the big piece, so it works well just to leave it there and do something with it. I really just like to layer in Christmas. It Look, makes it easy yeah. to do when you're putting it in. Uh -huh. It makes it really easy when you're putting it away. Right. Which uh, I increasingly yes. is, is a concern, I think, to all of us. But in, So for my question of the day, let me know if you incorporate Christmas decor into what's already out or if you actually put what's already out away to make room for festive and a lot of Fist people of do decor. that. They have really mm -hmm. large collections of Santas or whatever, and they'll yes. empty all the bookshelves. Well, can yes. you imagine if I tried to empty my bookshelves? Yes. So, and, um, and if you do, this is a tip I learned from my friend Elaine. When she would like redo her mantle or, I don't know, a dish rack or something uh, like that, she would take a picture of the way it was before she removed everything and put in her holiday decor. So when she had to go back and recreate that vignette, she would remember how she had it arranged right. and, and, and how I do that too, especially it. with my clients when I, I have a couple that I help decorate for Christmas and you know I don't exactly remember where everything was so I do that I may not always put it back exactly like it was uh -huh. but at least it kind of reminds me and yes you know we it gives you a nice uh, visual clue well and especially uh, if something is form fit yes to it to a display so. and then Stuart if you don't mind showing there's wreaths in every window and I love that. We just saw some of these wreaths at Mockingbird Manor and this is exactly what I had in mind mm -hmm. on how to use them. How, ma how many windows do you have and how many wreaths do you have? There are probably, I think I have about 20 wreaths. There are like three windows that I don't put them in that they don't fit. Um, but they're really simple and, and it's just a, a band of ribbon link, you know, uh -huh. linked through the wreath. And we are fortunate that our windows are double hung. So I can literally just lower the top window and put the piece in and close it up uh, in most places. There are a couple of windows we open throughout the year, so I put a thumbtack in those, you know, just to hold it. But very simple. Very, um, very simple. I, for my outdoor ones, I put grommets at the top dude. to just yeah. slip over And then when I store now. these, I actually take, I took uh, the tube out of paper towels and cut it. And so I just roll that ribbon around that. So it keeps the ribbon smooth. Yeah. Um, so it's really great easy. You're, idea. Not, you're, not, you're not redoing ribbon every year, which is a nightmare. And, yeah, and dust free. Um, yeah. But I, I love the uniformity of that. Yeah, that is a theme throughout the whole house. So you'll see reason in all the windows and all the rooms. And then you have, I noticed just, just little trinkets. You have angels and things that some of which probably are out year round, but some obviously. Of them are, and some of them are, yeah. Um, now, because, you know, obviously this is all about garden-inspired <laughs> living. This is about garden-inspired living. Look at this gorgeous bird's nest fern. Oh, my word. Look at all that new growth. This just makes me salivate uh, with envy. Good. It's yeah. so, so beautiful. You said this is really old? I've had it for old? seven or eight years, and it was fairly small when I got it. Actually, it was in an arrangement where somebody had done several live plants together, you know, in a basket. Uh -huh. And that's the one I kept out of it. So I've, I've kept it along. And it stays inside most years. It stays in all year. Occasionally I'll put it out on the porch. And this is south sun. It doesn't get too much sun for you here? Not in the winter. Even though it is south, I think it's... We keep our house cool for one thing, too. Right. So they like that. Um, it's We don't have a real warm home, so I think that's part of it. But generally it's a little bit where the Christmas tree is, so it's a little more uh, uh, protected from yeah, the weather. Yeah, well, it's, it's really, uh, really just, just beautiful. Yeah, I love a, a gardening touch in your house all the time. If something live, I think that's... Yeah, so important. Um, I, I agree. So. And well, and you've got also live poinsettias around. Yes. You've got lots of, you said these were very, would, would See, you say another, these were 60s or 70s from your 70s. grandmother? Was, my grandmother bought it, but it was in the 70s. And that's a Christmas tree topper. Um, and you'll see another one in the dining room that's actually on a Christmas tree. Um, but they make great little, you know, just decorative yeah. accessory things. Again, well, I'm pretty sure that's from Miss Jackson's as well. Well, and what I love about them is they speak to different eras, or at least those eras where we grew up yes. and experienced our child. Absolutely. Our, our well, well, that was on the top Christmas. of our family tree for yeah. many years. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, and look at these. These are very, very dear. Yeah, I you, found those at Mockingbird Manor many years ago. So. Don't you love Mockingbird yeah, Manor? Yeah, it's one of my favorite places to go. Just, Just even wonder, be inspired. So yes, uh, shop for ideas, and yes. then you always you always end up coming home with something. Oh, you do absolutely. Yeah, we just so. recently did a little tour there. Oh, did you? Okay. Of Mockingbird that. Manor, and they had just so fun things. You said you thought these were Italian. I think they're Italian. Uh, just paper, pressed paper. I think there's a label on. Yeah, made in Italy. Yeah, and so. the fact that they can be so probably, and they, this is what's cool. Talk about storing things. Them they go like don't, that. Don't you love the so, brilliance of that? I know, and I'm sure these were designed for tourists because uh -huh. you know that would be so easy to slip in your suitcase when you're 
in Venice. Well, you know what? Um, if I were in Venice and I were a tourist, I would, I would I will look for these several, when I, I know, Venice, I would so. slip several of those, several yeah. of those in my suitcase. So. And and then this is one of you've done one of my very favorite things to do, which is working with your existing decor, just taking whatever wreaths you can find, whether you make them mm. or sometimes these are Christmas ornaments. You said you thought this was a napkin I ring, think it is, yeah. and you just slip it over. I love the expression. <laughs> I love the expression on this face, like whatever. What happened to me? Yeah, right. just so. put that wreath on me, whatever. But, and this is a great example of where I didn't touch anything else on this chest. I just added that wreath to it, and you immediately saw it, which yes. you know, it's a little touch of Christmas. So detail. I think that those are important throughout the whole house. And it speaks to your your signature touches, your Christmas signature yes. touches of of wreaths. Okay, now let's go to the next area. Okay. Well, as I have done many times, this is where I come in, yes. your front door, which is so, so charming, and behind you to greet me. This is a really realistic faux wreath. Isn't that great? And that was kind of hard to find. I'd found the small ones, but all the other windows, but I couldn't find the right one for the front door. And finally, this year on Terrain, which is a, a oh, company, Shop Terrain, shop terrain Love they terrain. had this and I tried it. And I really, again, and you can't see this on the outside, but there's one wreath outside of the chimney, which a lot of the viewers who saw this before will remember I had a very plain chimney. So you see a wreath outside, that's the start. And then you see one here. And yes. then you come in and you start seeing yes. one all the windows. But finding this one was tough. So it was a, I, they were always too big mm -hmm. or too thick. And to get a, one that fits on here and then to go behind the storm door was tricky. So well, I think um, it, a wreath that permanently is your focal yeah. point for when you come in, it's worth investing a little bit more. Yeah. A little bit more in that. So here's a here's a question for you. I, I, for me, you know, there are traditional, just iconic forms of Christmas. There's the wreath mm -hmm. form and the Christmas tree form, and I definitely fall in camp wreath. I do too. I I really do. So there's something about that conical shape that I just don't love as much. Yeah, and the, uh, just the continuity, the, the softness soft, of it. Right, uh, and it. You know, wreaths can be used lots of times of the year. They're not just a Christmas item. So mm -hmm. I think that's part of why I like it too. Yeah, oh, I could um, see this beautifully oh, yeah, you could decked out that in a little the spring bit, right? with spring Put a different blooms color and ribbon, things. All that, yeah. Yes, and yeah. then here's another angel. It is, this obviously probably came from your grandmother. It did, and I, I think she probably purchased that in the late 50s or the early 60s. It looks very um, 50s to me. It does, doesn't it, yeah. She had a, a living room that was blue and purple. And then she, at Christmas, would use pink in there instead of red. Um, so she had. You must have uh, gotten your flair for uh, for design course, from absolutely. from your yeah, yeah, grandmother. It, it is somewhat innate. Um, anyway, but that was one of the pieces that I kept from her collection of things, and and a whole pink Christmas thing is a bit overmatched, I think, at this point. But in the fifties and sixties, it was it was it was, it was kind of the thing. Well, so. what I love about the fifties ornaments is is for those of us of a certain age. That is nostalgic Christmas mm. to us. It was the, it was the Christmas of the fifties of of that iconic movie, The Christmas Story, and yes. the Red Ryder BB gun. Mm -hmm. To me, that was kind of what really signified the magical it, it, the magical right, so. um, aura of Christmas. And then over here, you've got uh, We Three Kings. All right, that's an estate sale find again. I think from the sixties, so some late mid century Christmas. So. I'm going to have to up my game on estate sales. <laughs> I, 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 go to lots of, I do lots of thrifting. I don't do lots I, of estate and, and sales. There, there are two different things. You're absolutely right. Yeah. So, and I think, you know, I paid a dollar or two a piece for those. I mean, they were really inexpensive. Um, but they're, they look handcrafted. They and do. They're just they beautiful. Do. In fact, they kind of look Italian to me, too, the way the mm -hmm. paper and the coloring and everything. When I was in high school, I worked in a gift shop. I don't know if you remember Nomi's Ark in Edmond, I and I worked in that gift shop, and we sold things Did like yeah. uh -huh, we sold things like that. Okay, let's go upstairs because you've you've got a guest bedroom and another office we upstairs. So let's right. go up here. Well, I am a huge fan of needlepoint. At one time, I really did a lot of it, and I need to did take you? it back yeah, up again because it's so relaxing. But that needlepoint pillow is exquisite. Isn't that lovely? A, f a good friend of mine made that several years ago. And then those are little, um, I guess, china or pottery ornaments sewn onto it. So, What a clever yeah. idea. A really clever idea. And if you don't needlepoint, sometimes that's something that you can find at the better antique mm -hmm. stores and, and thrift stores. And I would ha I would happily snuggle up as a guest in your well, in your holiday home with yeah. that green teddy bear. I think it's kind of important to give a little something to your guests, um, you know, that's holiday. And right. Because a lot of times, especially this room, they can come up and sit in the chair and 
and there's just a little bit of festiveness going on so well it's yeah. just a nod to the season yeah. and and plus i think sometimes it's fun when you don't discover everything all at once where it reveals itself over time Absolutely. and you appreciate the nuance and the humor of little touches yeah. of but, and and like in a guest room it's just simple even just to do find some red sheets and put those on the bed for christmas uh -huh. you know and, and I, I don't use them any other time of the year they're just for christmas so it would, uh, it would be incredible to see your house decorated for Hanukkah with all of the blue and the white blue, and the yes, silver and everything. Would it would. However, it might blend in so much. <laughs> well, and that's true, too. That yeah, we, one of the nice things, red's a good accent for the house being blue and white and creams, you know, so the red really does show up. And there's always some red in our house, but um, but of course a lot more comes out at Christmas. So do, are, these, are these sheets out your, I can't remember. No, I never use them except for Christmas. Okay, except I mean, for Christmas. Just, yeah. No, normally the bed's done in blue and white, so. Well, it just is... Couldn't be charming. And then, of course, you've got your statement wreaths. Yes, my wreaths up everywhere. Here. And I was looking in this office over here, and you have you have some of the same needlepoint pillows. Right, I've got that little Merry Christmas pillow and, and repetition the of the wreaths. Right. And then the bathroom windows don't lend themselves to wreaths so much. So those are some Santas I just stuck in there. They fit perfectly, mm -hmm. just just barely. That one just Santa, barely, that fit. one Santa. So. Yeah, Stuart, that's the that's the pillow that I have, and then and Stuart's giving me a look like you're move, we're moving ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know that those are going to show up. But look long. at the look at the cute little Santas there. That are just. They look like they were just made for they that, kind of that window. They're even the right color green for the bathroom with yeah. the greens on them. Um, well, it's it's something that older homes just have that is just so uniquely the personality of an older home, mm -hmm. and that's the unique tiles and the unique yeah, colors and, and things of that nature. Okay, you want to go down and go to your we, kitchen we now, can go down. dining room so. and kitchen. Well, probably the easiest way to festivize any room is just put some glittery baubles in a bowl. It absolutely is. So, so that, the, that's part of my collection of vintage balls that I, again, purchased at estate sales. And, uh -huh. and actually some thrift stores on those, because for many years you could find those by the box still. You know, yes, not but the, and the box is uh, every yeah. bit as precious. And, well, and you know, I used to put them all back in the box. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Finally, one year I was putting all this stuff away and I was like, okay, enough. <laughs> enough already. So now they go in enough. giant Ziploc bags. <laughs> well, I uh, was looking for just some plain baubles the other well, day. I, they were in short supply. I couldn't are. find and, any. And the old ones, I mean, like I used to pay 10 or 25 cents a piece for them. You know, they're like 3 and 4 and $5 oh, now yeah. for just the plain ones. Yeah. So yeah. it's really crazy. So I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I bought them when I bought them because right. they, they, I probably wouldn't do it now. Well, you've got little so, Santas and yeah, just, bows. And, it, you know, again, one bow makes... I mean, I didn't touch anything on here right. again. Just added that bow to that, and it just it's makes that, that little pop of red, yeah, and it, it draws your eye. So. That real pop of um, red, and then over here, you've got this wonderful, and I love this idea. Talk about a, a real hack, and that's using a quilt a, or, or a, a blanket spread, or right. anything as a tablecloth. So this is an old bedspread, and fortunately, it is finished all the way around with fringe, and. Um, I'm assuming it came that way, I don't know. Uh -huh. And again, this is something my grandmother used every year. Um, and we used to eat on it. It's, it we don't anymore because it's, it's uh, kind of past its prime. But it makes a great, you know, just an everyday cloth to be on there. Yes, so, and I love just uh, the, I yeah. love the red and white, which has kind of been my, my color theme yeah. for, the, for this year. Now, this isn't holiday, but I have to comment on these marble Aren't those fruits. gorgeous? Yeah. Oh my word, these are exquisite. So, and that's one of those things that are always out, um, but at Christmas I like to pull some things around so you see them in a different way. And they kind of look like sugared fruit, that the texture yes. on the marble kind of gives you that look. And I just think they work well with that. And then and in here especially, I've pulled all my mercury glass out from uh -huh. various spots. And um, there are you know, things on the table, there are things over here. These are usually in the front window in the living room. Um, yeah, for many, many years I, I made huge displays on a tiered stand of sugared fruit. Oh yeah with sugar, gilded uh, sugar, it? it's, yeah. it's gorgeous, but it's, but, a lot it, of work. but it's a lot of work and it doesn't last very no, long. Doesn't, so. Okay, so there, and you, I recognize something. Do you see your, your basket? Color there. <laughs> yes, yeah. I so. do see that basket. So I will say that that was, um, a, I don't normally put poinsettias in here, but this year I decided I want to do something different. 
And I had them and I was like, I need the right thing for these to go in. And your baskets were sitting and I was like, I'm gonna try this. And I wasn't sure it would work, but it really does. No, um, it, it, I love it. it. So it's, it's very you, John. Well, it kind of yeah, is, isn't it's, it? So, it's very you, John. Um, so and now then, I'm looking for a new home for my Christmas cards. Usually there's a silver tray there with all the Christmas cards, cards in it. On. And, and I don't know where that's gonna go yet, so. Well, fortunately, we that. don't have as many, we don't get as many we Christmas don't. cards as we, we not, used to. So. Um, Okay, and you've got a wonderful. So, right, and so this is kind of the tree that I've done with all the little ornaments on it, just so you can see them better. They get lost in a big tree. Uh, but another one of those cool um, tree toppers that my grandmother bought, uh, again, Miss Jackson's in Tulsa. How long did it take you to put all of those on there? It's a while, and you do it in phases. You do it, and then you uh -huh. kind of walk away from it for a day or two, and then you come back and put some more in. Yep. And, um, and you know, I'm always tempted just to put a, a sheet over this or something and see if I can make it stay, but. I'm, I'm still a little You're chicken still, with that. So, well, um, I, the other thing is, is I think when you do it in installments, yeah. <laughs> installment decorating, is then you appreciate more each and every little well, bauble and absolutely. the story of each and yeah. every and one. I, and Christmas is one of those times when you really do think about where things came from. You and, do. And if it meant something to you or not. And so that is, it's kind of therapeutic if you like that sort of thing. To put all this stuff back on individually, yeah. you know, and taking it yeah. off is not quite as much fun. But um, And I think, I think increasingly now, I you kind of give yourself permission. I used to think every single thing had to be done every single year. And now I don't feel that way anymore. It makes it more special when I don't do some of the same things every year. Well, and I will tell you this year, for, especially this year, um, I did far more than I had done the last two years. So I had kind of gotten to where I just did the reason the window, which believe it or not is enough to make you feel like it's Christmas. Yes, yes. Uh, but then this year has been fun, and, and I've had more time at home. And well, it was just and last nice. year was yeah. COVID. I, it was I think crazy. a lot of us. And we knew maybe. we weren't going to have people in at all last yeah. year. So. Yeah. Um, and another thing I did this year, too, as I said, I bought a new tree for the living room, which is larger than the one I had. I used to have three trees. So I was able to consolidate well, down to two, two, which that took a lot of time out of, of the whole situation, which was nice. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going through all of my yeah. Christmas decorations and really curating them to see what I want to keep uh, and what I don't. I have, I have a, two totes of need to go away ornaments, yes. but I can't let go of them yet. So. Well, last, you know, increasingly I just use, I do use most, I have a live small, but uh, I have a live tree and live greenery. And the, the reason I like it is because once it's done, it just goes into the compost pile or it's just discarded yes, and I don't really have to pack it and put it away. I think all of us try, whether we're older or younger or whatever, we're trying to, in our own way, simplify Christmas mm -hmm. and its execution because it is, it's a lot of work to, to make magic. It is, it is, it really yeah, is. So, it's, and, and even though, I mean, I, I have simplified this over the years because I used to do a lot of greenery and a lot of berries mm -hmm. and garlands and a lot, you know, a lot more lights and all yeah. that sort of stuff. And it, that just takes so much time. So, right. and you know, I used to like decorate the chandelier and I would yeah. do the staircase oh, yeah. and, uh -huh. and then I'd be sitting there a week later thinking, this is just too much. It yeah. just, it is. Yeah, so, I think picking and, um, picking and choosing right. and is, I think something that we all constantly kind of struggle. Yes, what's just the right, what's just the right tone. But if I had a, if set. I had, you know, if, if I didn't have any time at all, I would have just put the wreaths up this year. And it would and, have been. And that would have been plenty, yeah. I think. I think it would have and still And especially if we get as much yeah. snow as we got last year, just please not that hard freeze in the February. The angels that um, Stuart's looking at now are from a local artist here in Oklahoma City who made those several years ago. Susan King, did you Susan, say? Suzanne King. Suzanne and King. And she started, she used to do them um, with children. And they would all make a funny, happy face on them. Uh -huh. Well, I like the angels, but I did not like the funny faces. Well, so, kind of scary so these were commissioned without faces. So they How just funny. have a plain face, so that they you know, are a little more serious Christmas ornament. But I'm sure there are lots of kids in Oklahoma City who have these who who help make them and, uh -huh. and decorate uh -huh. them and all that. Uh -huh. so, and that could be special. Uh, yeah. Your kitchen always has so much color in it, just naturally. John, well, I don't know how much stuff you even have to really do in yeah, here. And that, it I add that, of festive. course. I get another little. Thing, a little bobble, um, did the wreaths, and of course our kitchen table is always Christmas because it's red. Uh -huh. So um, didn't have to do anything there. But you've got another beautiful okay. poinsettia. I, I am poinsettia is one of those Christmas holiday plants that I run hot and cold on. Do you? I just I think you know you can see so many really sad ones. Well, that's what I'm going to say. You have to buy good ones. You have to you buy good ones. You can't go to Lowe's or Home Depot and buy <laughs> the two dollar ones because they just they don't last and they don't look good. They're not pretty. Yeah, and um, I I, but yours just they almost don't look real because well, and they're just right. so and gorgeous. I will say when you buy them from a, a good nursery, you know the color is usually really intense mm -hmm. 
and they last. I mean, I, I feel bad in the end of January when I just finally throw them away yeah. because I'm, I am sick of them by then. But it's such instant color. It is. And um, we keep our house fairly cool anyway, so they, it's a pretty good environment for them. I think if in a really warm house, they don't do real well either. So yeah. uh, you're right. There are lots of sad ones in the world. But, and um, then speaking of holiday plants, now yours doesn't necessarily look like it's specific to the holidays, but you've got a rosemary over here. And that's something I always encourage people that'll quite often ask, where do I get my topiaries? Mm -hmm. Where do I get, um, whether it's cy lemon cypress or it's a rosemary topiary, or in some cases, even boxwood. Well, Christmas time, the holidays, really an opportune time to search them out it because is. a lot of times they will be available as a holiday plant and if you can keep them alive right. if you can keep them alive for me then they just make a beautiful topiary no, contribution really and of course mine's not in garden. any sort of form and, and that was just from outside you know that i used out for the summer but i always bring it in and mm -hmm. it generally makes it to get back outside yeah. just doesn't look too good on. but generally does and well, then of course those are the little topiary starts that you brought me um, next to it. So oh, I do those recognize yeah. those. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I did little... put them in clay pots. You, yes. No, as, as I suspected <laughs> right. you would. As um, I suspected you would. So anyway, but and again, I think things from outside in the winter um, add to the holiday spirit. Oh, I, do I mean, it's, it I doesn't do have too. to be just all Christmas stuff. And of course, in January, I love these just as much as well when all the red's gone so yeah and it like um, it livens up the inside really does, of your so. house this year well i don't know about your little microcosm here but in my yard i still have not had a freeze no. and so i lots of my topiaries and things they're still outside which i'm while i'm nervous about the fact that it's so warm it is nice that i don't have to bring them in so right. their indoor sabbatical will not be so long well, that they'll I suffer waited until like the week before thanksgiving and i finally brought the succulents in that i wanted to keep and um the rosemary came yeah. in then i think too they're still i mean i think i'm going to keep my uh plumbago i dug it out of the pot and put it in a yeah, plastic you told me you were gonna and try it's to sitting do that. out there and i wondered last night whether i may have gone one day too long we'll see well um, there's you know the thing is even if it freezes there's so much if plants aren't elevated there's so much residual heat yes. on surfaces so, whether but, it's and a, the other cool thing the geraniums over here in our east oh i know they've never been <laughs> they are stunning in fact i think you can see from the window out here Stuart, when you go by and i almost want to bring it in because there's such you know beautiful red color for christmas yeah uh, it, but i won't so yeah i don't know it? Stuart, can yeah, you get that? a little glimpse of them i know and it's it? december i know we should not have these at all <laughs> so um it's it's you can definitely see them Yep. <laughs> that, speaking of pop of color. No, it really is. And then in the master bedroom. So again, fit, my same tricks. Change fit, the sheets. Fit, fit for a king. All right. We have the, in a bowl. Yeah. Yeah. Stuart, can you see this very regal bowl <laughs> of, of handmade ornaments mm -hmm. that you say may be... I think they were probably... Kit, kits. kits, okay. Um, and again, grandmother who did so many things did these in the '60s, and um, and there some of them were kind of in '60s colors, especially the the teal one and the pink one. Okay, so pick uh, your favorite, John. Well, I sort of am partial to this green one. This with green all of one. This stuff hanging off of it. So and, you know, you could you could really, if you were creative, you could really. And you know, something like that would be gorgeous used at Easter on the table. Uh -huh. or, it's very uh, Marie Marie Antoinette. It is right. It really is. <laughs> yeah, so. Stuart, which is your favorite? This one? The dark this green one, one. yeah. It's more manly. It's more manly. <laughs> I kind of, I, I, I don't know. Well, I'm the just, color on that one's so intense. Oh, yeah. and I didn't see this green one over here. Oh, my gosh. Well, the, the textural contrast of the velvet and the, you know, the yeah. sparkly well, ribbon and the sequins is and I very really think, fun. You know, someone who's, who's far craftier than I could take custom jewelry and ribbon and things oh, yeah. and make some really cool heirloom type ornaments. Oh, wouldn't this be uh, a wouldn't this be a fun way to trick somebody for an engagement ring or yes, something right. is to have it on here and say, Oh look, that's especially yep, really sparkly. Would, so anyway, I think they're pretty crazy. <laughs> Stuart's laughing. You just gave an idea. Yeah, yes, Stuart's did. laughing at me, yeah. but wouldn't that be I, wouldn't, know, wouldn't that be a idea. fun idea? And I wonder how common they were because I don't I've seen a few over the years, but never a lot. So I've never seen any quite this ornate. Yeah, so I and, and I also don't, I don't remember seeing them with the velvet, hmm. the velvet underneath. But then you've got your traditional wreaths in these windows. You've got more. More mercury glass. Yeah, more mercury glass baubles. And it's just, 
and and then earlier you were talking about yes you do I, I, don't you just love the primitive yes vibe I do. that's a of these vintage Ralph Lauren blanket that these checks that I pull out at Christmas and stripes together and Stuart you were saying you had this where did you have I this had it as a wallpaper in my old bathroom <laughs> did you just flash back to your old bathroom and growing yeah. growing up it reminded me of my grandfather yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah. Memory, yes yes very very fun I see an, another Italian Christmas tree. Yes, so I, do, I think it's important to put things in rooms where you are often in them, you know, so mm -hmm. it's a nice little thing in the morning when you're getting dressed to have a little Christmas cheer. So, yeah, yeah, uh, to kind of get your day started. Nothing major, just started a little right. something. So. And then I have to end up here because these are just wonderful. First of all, I, I adore campaign furniture. Isn't that great? And this is an especially beautiful oh, version of one. And then your trademark blue glazed blue pots with those fabulous succulents in them. Really, really and, beautiful. And that table was another estate sale find and I didn't really have a place for it. So it's really been in the storage and just this fall I figured out I can use this for my winter plants. Um, yeah, and it's, so I brought it in. So I'm glad that, I got it. Let's see, does that face north? It is north. Uh -huh. Will they get enough light there, do you think? Well, I hope so. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. We'll so. see. But um, typically, I have kept those in the storage place next to the garage, which gets very low light and gets fairly cold. Now, last year, things did not survive that because it got too cold right. for too long. Right. Uh, but these were so beautiful this year, I just really wanted to bring oh, them the house and try. They're, they're just uh, a, so we'll see. a beautiful, a beautiful yeah. appointment. Well, we'll end on that on that last sweet little wreath hanging above the succulents. I can't thank you enough, my friend. Oh, it's so good to see you. Uh -huh. Thank you for coming. Merry Christmas. And you too, Stuart. Merry Christmas to you. <laughs> Well, here is your fashion epilogue for today. My earrings, I just got these yesterday at Target and I really, really love them. They're lightweight and yet still make a statement, I think. My top is thrifted, it's Ralph Lauren. I got it at Goodwill. And here is a tip about a really, um, if you're ever struggling to find out what to put with or pair with a bottom, whether it's a skirt, jeans, slacks, whatever, always a crisp, white shirt will do the trick. And so I have a whole wardrobe of crisp, that's hard to say, crisp white shirts, most of which I've, I have thrifted. This one is thrifted, it's Ralph Lauren from Goodwill. Um, as is this fabulous, fabulous skirt. This, what you talk about a find. I got this at Goodwill for maybe $4, and I wanna show you because it still came with the tag on it. Look, you guys. It was a $256 skirt, never been worn uh, from, what's the place called? Art Fashion, Art Museum, anyhow. It even still had the care tag for it attached to it. So this is really in the category of a great score. I love this skirt. It's got, it's got that, um, that real Western vibe that I like. My boots were a gift from Hubs from last year, my cowboy boots. My necklace is homemade. A friend of mine and I made a bunch of these kind of boho necklaces a while back. And Stuart, we have a request for you to start highlighting my bracelets and showing close-ups of my bracelets a little bit more. This one I got at, I don't remember where I got it, and I don't remember where I got this one. This one was a gift from my sister. It's one of those drawstring bracelets, and my ring came from Madewell. So there you go. There is my fashion epilogue for today.